Hey, what is going on guys? RVZ Stealth here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my opinion on the best top laners for patch 6.15. So first up is going to be Rumble. So Rumble is actually very underrated right now, in my opinion, for the top lane. After the introduction of the Proto Belt item, Two champions in the top lane have been doing a lot better, being like Rumble and Cannon. I think that that item just gives him a really good power spike, it allows him to duel really well in the early game, and it also does give him a lot of tanky stats or a lot of HP, because your, your core build on Rumble is going to be Proto Belt, you're going to get Leandris and then Rylai's, so you're going to do a lot of damage because the Leandri synergizes really well uh, with your ultimate. And you're also going to be pretty hard to kill as well with all your uh, with all the health that you do have from those items. His ultimate is a really strong ability. If you can hit that consistently in team fights as him, then you can just single-handedly win games as Rumble. He is pretty strong in the early game as well. If you do stay at around like 50% heat on him, then you should be able to duel like most of the other top lane champions. And if you do take Ignite on Rumble, a lot of the time the enemies won't expect how much damage you're going to to do in the early game so like these past few patches or not these past few patches but last patch and this patch i've kind of been leaning towards taking ignite on more top lane champions i've taken it on rumble recently and i've actually been able to get like first blood a lot of the time so if you are confident on your rumble then take ignite try to get a nice snowball going in the early game because once you do get to your core items you are really really strong and it's going to be really hard to beat a rumble once he does get his Proto Belt, his Leandris, and his Rylai's. He's got pretty good crowd control in his kit too with his E and his ultimate and he's one of those top lane champions to where you don't need to do really well in the laning phase to be successful on him. Of course it's always nice to win lane and get ahead but if you do go even or if you do just die once in the laning phase then you're still going to be useful because Rumble really only needs his Leandri's item to be effective. That item just gives him a really really good power spike so don't get too down on yourself if you do die once in the laning phase as this champion and he is also really good at fighting in the jungle that's where you want to try to prioritize where you're uh, team fighting as rumble because it's just really easy to line up a nice aoe ultimate in the jungle and a few cons to him or just one con is that he is a little bit harder to play than some of the other top laners because his ultimate is a very strong ability a very game changing ability but it can be a little bit hard to hit if you are new on the champion Next up for the top lane is Aurelia. So I did make a bit of a mistake last patch for not having Aurelia on the top five. She is definitely still a really strong top lane champion. And honestly, I thought the nerf to her ultimate would affect her more than it did, but it really didn't affect her at all. Because when you are playing Aurelia, you do just have to get that first kill in the laning phase and then it really doesn't even matter too much if your ultimate is on cooldown or not because you're going to get that first kill you're probably going to have like your sheen finish by then and maybe even your trini force and once you do get trini force on aurelia you can out duel like pretty much any other top lane champion even if your ultimate is on cooldown so those nerfs really didn't affect her too much and she's still pretty much a pick or ban in the top lane she's a really strong dueling champion there's really no hard counterplay to Aurelia because if she gets that stun off on you then you're pretty much dead. She also does have pretty good sustain in the laning phase with her W. Her W also provides true damage which just makes her an insane dueling champion. She does have the gap closer on her Q which just allows her to make some really nice plays in the laning phase. You can dash to that low health minion, stun the target, and then just burst them down really easily or you can just use it like straight up as a gap closer. She does have a very strong or a very good build path as well. You only really need Trini Force on Aurelia to be effective. And if you are going even or if your team does need a tank, you can just end up going Trini Force and then full tank after that. But if your team is lacking some damage, then you can go like Assassin Aurelia and you can pretty much like one shot any squishy target in the game. And a few cons to Aurelia are that she is a little bit weaker for the first few levels. So if you are playing against an Aurelia and you know how much damage your champion can do then I would definitely recommend to try to go for an all-in on her in the laning phase or try to at least like poke her down a little bit and just zone her from CS. Her power spike comes once she does get her sheen and once she does finish Trini for so if you can shut her down before she does get those items and before she gets a kill on you then you can do well against her and she is also a little bit mana hungry in the laning phase if she is using like her Q to CS a lot. 
Next up is going to be Wukong. So I really like Wukong right now for the top lane. He's got a great early game and he's also got a very strong mid game. I find that I'm actually able to get first blood or get the first kill on my opponent a lot of the time as Wukong. When you jump in with your E and you get your Q off and you auto attack one more time, you're going to get that Thunderlord proc off and you're going to do a lot of damage from your abilities. And then if the trade isn't going too well, you can just use your W and back out. Or if you're winning the trade, then you can just keep autoing them and keep killing them. So Wukong's like trading in the laning phase is really strong and it just allows him to just have a really good laning phase, especially once he does hit level six. His level six spike is really good because he does get his ultimate. And then once he does hit level 11, that's when he gains like a really, really big power spike. His ultimate's base damage goes from like 20 up to around like 110, I'm pretty sure. So look to team fight once you do get rank 11 in Wukong's ultimate because you're gonna do a load of AoE damage in those team fights. He does have a really nice build path as well. You really only need Yomu's and Black Cleaver on Wukong for damage items. And then after that, you can go full tank and you can still do a load of damage. If you do need damage though on your team and you have like a tanky jungler and a tanky support, then you can go like full assassin Wukong. And the one shot potential with that build is just really insane. He is a very easy champion to play as well. I find that he's one of the easier top laners because your main objective as Wukong is to just dive in on the back line, get an ultimate off on the enemy AD carry or mid laner, and then your job is pretty much done from there. He does also have pretty good juking potential in his kit with his W. And a few cons to him are that he is pretty weak if he does fall behind. You want to be diving onto the back line, getting nice ultimates off, and if you don't have the damage or you don't have the tank stats yet, then you're just going to get blown up right away before you even do anything. And he's also pretty weak if the enemy team does have some strong disengage. So if the enemy team already has locked a Janna, then I would consider picking a different top lane champion than Wukong in that situation. Next up is going to be another one of my personal favorite top laners right now, and that champion is Kennen. So Kennen is a great top lane pick. I'd say he's probably the best teamfight top laner and mid lane champion right now that you can play. The amount of damage and the amount of crowd control that you can provide for your team as Kennen is really crazy. A nice ultimate on the back line in a teamfight off on the enemy AD carry or the enemy mid laner can just win you the fight really easily. And it, whenever you do have your flash up as Kennen, there's really no counterplay to that. I just hate playing against a good cannon player, like if you're playing AD carry or mid lane, because you know that you really can't do anything against him unless you are playing someone like an Ash or someone that does have a bit of disengage, maybe like a Tristana, then Ken is just going to be able to blow you up pretty much every single team fight unless you do have a reliable support. He does have a pretty good laning phase too. He really doesn't have any hard counters in lane because he is a ranged champion, so he does really good in a lot of the melee matchups that are in the top lane right now. He's got great mobility in his kit as well with his E. Whenever he does have his E active, it doubles his movement speed, so it just allows him to escape out of sticky situations, and it also allows him to engage really nicely. And a few cons to Kennen are that he is weaker against disengage, so like I said, for Wukong, if the enemy team does lock a Janna, then I would reconsider picking Kennen in that situation. And he is also very weak without his ultimate. You want to play around Kennen's ultimate. You only want to fight when it is up. So if it's not up, then let your team know. Let your team know when it is going to be up because you're, the amount of damage that you're missing out if you don't have your ultimate is like quite a lot. And you're really not going to be as useful in those team fights if you don't have it. And to round out the top five for this video, I have Gangplank. So Gangplank is also a great teamfight top lane champion. As you can see, I kind of think that the strongest top laners right now are the ones who can teamfight really well. These champions just can do great once you do get to the mid to late game. And once it does come down to like that Baron fight or that Dragon fight, because they can provide like a load of AoE damage in those fights. And Gangplank, the amount of AoE damage he can provide is probably some of the best for any top laner right now. A nice triple barrel in a team fight with Gangplank can hit like all the enemy targets and it can chunk them down really low. And once you do get to late game as him, like one barrel followed up by your ultimate can completely one shot the enemy AD carry or mid laner. So a good Gangplank player can just absolutely carry really hard right now. He's got great wave clear in his kit with his barrels. He really doesn't have a very hard laning phase either. If he is in a bit of a harder matchup, then he can just farm with his Q from range if he does need to. 
he does have the global presence with his ultimate so whenever i do hit six as gangplank i just let my team know that i do have my ultimate ready and then if my bot lane does start to fight or if my mid laner starts to fight then i can just throw my ultimate down there and most of the time I will end up like picking up an assist. Sometimes I'll get lucky and I'll even get a kill, which can actually get a nice snowball going for you in the laning phase. A few cons to GP are that his barrel mechanics are definitely very unique and they are a little bit hard to get used to at first. And he is also a fairly easy gank target in the early game because he does not have a gap closer. So first on the honorable mentions is going to be Alawi. So a lot of you guys asked me in my last top lane video why I didn't have Alawi on there. And it's mainly because I just saw a lot of really bad Alawi players previous to making that video. But last patch, I actually did see quite a few like pretty good Alawi players. And I think that if you know what you're doing on the champion, then she can just be absolutely insane. Like the amount of AOE damage that you can do with her in team fights and like your 2v1 potential or your 1v2 potential is really strong in here. I've seen so many good Alawi players just once she does hit level 6, the enemy jungler comes to gank and then she just ends up getting a double kill top lane and she's really hard to shut down if she does get ahead. So if you're a good Alawi player and you know what you're doing on her, then I do think that she can be a really strong carry top laner. Next up is going to be Quinn. So Quinn is a really good laning top lane champion. You need to get ahead with her in the laning phase to be effective though. If you don't do well in the laning phase and you fall behind or even if you just go even in lane, then you are going to get outscaled by a lot of the other top lane champions that were on my top five. So just, I would recommend running Ignite on Quinn top lane if you are going to play her. Look to go for that first blood. And if you can get a snowball going in the early game, then you can look to Romus her, look to go mid lane or look to go bot lane and just try to end the game before it does hit like the 25 to 30 minute point because if it does go past then it's going to be a little bit harder for you to carry in those mid to late game team fights next is scion so scion is probably the best overall like tank champion right now for the top lane he does have pretty good base damage on all of his abilities so he really doesn't have to build any damage at all and he can still provide quite a bit for his team in team fights the amount of damage that your q does do in the laning phase if you get like a fully charged q off is actually really surprising and you can get the first kill on your opponent a lot of the time in the landing phase if you know what you're doing on Scion. Once you do get to that mid to late game he's super hard to kill as well. He's got the shield with his W which just allows him to soak a load of damage in team fights and he's got really strong engage and CC in his kit as well. Next up is Pantheon. So Pantheon is very similar to Quinn in the sense that his early game is super strong, but his late game is definitely a lot weaker than the champions on my top five. Just make sure you do go aggressive in the early game as Pantheon. I would definitely take Ignite on him. Try to poke the enemy down at level one with your Q. And then once you do hit level two, if they're around half HP, then go for an all in on them. Try to stun them, get your Q off, pop the Ignite. And if you do play him correctly and you get the enemy chunked down a little bit before level two, then you should be able to pick up first blood a lot of the time. And then once you hit level six as Pantheon, look to go for a roam right away, unless you're absolutely stomping your lane. Because if you can get like a nice uh, double kill down bot lane, or if you can get a kill mid lane, then you can definitely get a nice snowball going and just end the game really early. Next up is Swain. So Swain is still a really strong pick for both top and mid in my opinion. I'm kind of confused as to why he's not seeing as much play these past few patches, but I don't think his ultimate nerf really did affect him too much. A lot of other people are saying that he's pretty weak now and he's not as strong as he was before, but he's still a really good pick come like mid to late game once he does get his core items. He's really hard to kill. He can do a lot of damage in team fight. So if you're still looking to play Swain or if you want to play him, he's still a great pick for sure. And to round out this video, the final honorable mention is going to be Cassiopeia. So Cassiopeia is a little bit better right now in the mid lane, I think, but top lane Cassiopeia is great as well because she does have a lot of really strong matchups right now in the top lane. If your enemy team or if your team is lacking a tank champion, then I would not pick her in that situation. But if you do have like a tanky jungle and a support locked in, then picking Cassiopeia top is a really good idea. You're going to at least be able to like out -see your opponent in the laning phase because you are ranged you can see us really easily with your e and if you are going up against a melee champion then you can look to kill them for like first blood or get a nice kill on them in the laning phase and snowball really hard so as long as you can play cassiopeia correctly you can hit your q in team fights and you can position well then she is a great pick right now 
So that is going to be all for this video, guys. If you did enjoy, then please be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you guys have not already. So thanks for watching, guys. Have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.